In this video, let's talk about lesson plans for a chemistry class. How to implement your plan, how to make sure that you have your lesson on paper and in your mind so that you come across to the students with confidence and have some fun in the process. Here, I'm giving you my 25 plus years advice as a high school chemistry teacher and want to pass along what I know to you even if you've heard this already. How awesome is it to hear from someone else that you don't work with on a daily basis or someone else maybe in your family and just confirm what you already thought. Or maybe you're gonna learn something new in the process. In my opinion, there's two types of lesson plans. There's the one that you have to hand in to administration and then there's the plan you're actually going through with the kids in the classroom. Much more formal lesson planning is required typically from administration, at least until you're quote unquote a seasoned teacher, which is several years away. Don't reinvent the wheel if you don't have to. Talk to your colleagues. Some of them, if they recently also started in the same school, they might already have a lot of the plans on the computer, which you can then adopt. Anything that you're gonna do, you don't have to start from scratch, but you are going to want to make it your own. That goes for lesson planning, that goes for worksheets, that, that goes for everything. Keep that in mind. You're not always going to be perfect, so get that right out of your head. But you want to be enthusiastic. Planning enthusiastic, certainly in front of the students. When I started over 25 years ago, I didn't have to hand in any kind of formal lesson plans. Literally what I did is I came up with what I call my notes. And writing out all that information I thought the students needed to know and learn and then figure out how I was going to do that. There are times where you will deviate from lesson plans. Fire drill. I don't know. Something else happens. Student has a really good question and you go off on a tangent. That also might happen when an administrator comes into your classroom to observe you. What you want to make sure you have when you're going to go down and discuss your lesson after it happens is that you have a modified lesson plan, maybe from the ones that you handed in the week before, and say, you know what, I thought about it after I handed them in, and here's some modifications I made. Here's, here's my lesson plan. Enough with this formal lesson plans. Let's check out some of the suggestions I have for you, just coming up with how you're going to teach the content. First of all, I would highly recommend using a textbook. Now, it would be wonderful to think that you have a high school chemistry textbook wherever your high school is, whatever state, whatever your requirements might be, that not only you can work with to come up with what you want to teach in your class, but textbooks that you could actually hand out to your students. It seems more and more we're getting away from an actual textbook. Even if it's an online textbook, it's better than nothing. It's Use it as an anchor. Now, as a teacher, what you want is you want to have more than one of the same level textbook. So when you're looking for example problems with answers, so you feel confident when you're going over it with the students, the easiest thing to do is have another textbook that has questions and answers that you can go ahead and use maybe during class as examples, hand out for homework, make worksheets, etc. My recommendation when it comes to chemistry is teach something some concept maximum three times to the students. So you might introduce it one day, and then you really get into to it the next period, the next day with the students and do some practice. And then you review it with them a third day. You're always gonna have students that don't understand some of the concepts. You're always gonna have a lot of information you need to get through with the students. And some of them you're gonna just have to carry along with you. This teaching sometimes max three times personally, um, is something that I've adopted for all these years. Switch it up. That's another one. If your administration is requiring a lot of hands-on science, which is wonderful. I mean, as chemistry teachers, we do it anyway. We do labs, but switch it up. Maybe you do some sort of hands-on activity. Maybe you're doing a lab. Maybe, yes, believe it or not, they need notes. They need some sort of anchor for themselves when they're going to review before a quiz or a test. I tell them it's like their log, their classroom log, that they date their notes and whatever we did that day, whatever I required them to write down, that they make sure they re review their notes. Notes are important too. 
But you know what? It would get boring if you do those day in, day out. Administration doesn't want to see it. Kids don't want to do it that way, nor do you. Maybe you, you spend a period going over demonstrations and explaining them or have the kids explain. There's tons of things that you can do in a chemistry class. Personally, I give homework. The students need to practice the skills that they're learning in class, and I don't give homework without the answers. I'm not necessarily going to give them every single worked out answer, but I want to give them the answers. So when they go home and practice, they know whether they're doing it right or wrong. They need to write down what they're attempting so they can bring that back into the classroom and you can work with them and correct their mistakes. I always tell them they're going to make mistakes. It's fixing them, what you're going to do about those that are going to be important. Lesson planning. Use a textbook as your anchor. Use a textbook as an anchor with the students. Hopefully you can hand out textbooks. You can have them take those home and you can have a classroom set. Textbooks are also great when you're going to be out. Maybe you got, you're out sick. You could give them assignments from a textbook. You could even assign them reading. I don't normally assign reading until after we've gone over a lesson in class on that particular topic, but it's your anchor. Use it. If your class, um, I'm sorry, if your school still has and uses textbooks, by all means, use it. You can always give it to the students at the beginning of the year, and maybe you don't use it that much. But what does it hurt? It's just another tool in your toolbox. Teach something max three times. You can't spend three weeks on something, but you don't want to not give it enough time for the students to process. Switch it up. Hands-on activities, demonstrations, labs, worksheets, having them work by themselves, having them work in groups. You got, you got it. You know what I'm talking about. Notes, they are important. The students have to be able to write things down, have to process information, and have to have their running log of what you're doing in class. And finally, give the homework with the answers. Or better yet, if the answers for certain questions are in the back of the textbook they might have, you don't even have to give them the answers. Just sign them the questions with the answers. All right, so with that, just a couple other things I want to mention, right? You can search these. American Chemical Society has a lot of resources for chemistry teachers. They also have a magazine called Chem Matters, which is a high school level magazine that explains the chemistry of different common items. If you Google Colorado FET, P-H-E-T, that is a website through the University of Colorado that has a lot of simulations for physics and for chemistry. Hogles, there is a website and there's a book. These are activities where the students are working in pairs or in groups and then you come together and discuss different topics in chemistry. I think they're really good as well. And my favorite, absolute favorite company for resources and also to buy supplies is called Flynn Scientific. Maybe you heard of these maybe you haven't. Check out more YouTube videos. Come on back. Hopefully you like what you heard today and you'll subscribe. More to come. If you have any comments, please leave them below. More important than that, always have fun. Good luck.